Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here. I want to go over something with you here on YouTube that I have already shared to some extent with our patrons through Patreon, our crowdfunding supporters. They already know about this, but I want to present it to everybody and try to get an idea of what might have happened during this very interesting phenomenon that resulted in the loss of two of our state-of-the-art weather stations in Louisiana during Hurricane Ida. Now, failure is part of success, okay? It just goes with the territory. Hurricanes are hard. It is hard to collect data. It is hard to set this equipment out. It doesn't mean we quit. We keep on persevering. We move on. We don't complain about it. Don't cry and whine and whatever. We move forward. We go with the next play, as it's called, and we try to figure out the reasons why stuff fails. I've been doing this for 25 years, and I'm not about to quit now. We had a setback. But in that setback, I think that we have discovered something really interesting that just might be helpful down the road for engineering and what we call a harmonic vibration or what. We'll have to wait and see. I want to present this to you, and then I would like for you to chime in as to what you think it is. And I rarely ask you to actively share my videos. I try to be kind of humble about it. But on this particular occasion, share this. Put it on Reddit. Put it on Facebook. Tweet it. Share it. YouTube it. Whatever you got to do. I want to try to find the right engineer, the right physicist, somebody with a lot more brain power than me that can explain exactly why what I'm about to show you happened. All right? That's a pretty good setup. Let's start, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First, this is the equipment. This is what it looks like. This is an RM Young anemometer right here. That's about a $1,600 piece of equipment. It is built to measure wind speed and direction, and it is state-of-the-art, high-end. You don't buy these at the mall at Brookstone. Is Brookstone even still in business? But you get the idea. These are scientific pieces of equipment. This box here is a Pelican case. Inside that box, a Raspberry Pi, a couple of batteries, a Verizon hotspot, to transmit this data from the anemometer. There's a pressure sensor as well. All of that is housed in these Pelican cases, which are military spec. And we've been doing this using these anemometers and the boxes in one form or another for 17 years. Rarely do we ever have a problem. Now, a couple of years ago, we started using these clamps right here. These are DOT approved, like they use these in the DOT, different traffic departments around the country use those orange clamps to fasten signs to jersey walls. That's that concrete barrier there, K-rail, jersey wall, whatever you want to call it. For the sake of this presentation, we'll call it a jersey wall. They clamp down with those T-screws, you see those right there, and you tighten those up, and the whole thing is secured. That's the T-screws right there, there's four of them. And you clamp that sucker down, and it doesn't go anywhere. I've tested these going back to 2019. It's a fairly new piece of equipment donated by one of our crowdfunding partners. Uh, and we've tested them. Barry 2019, Lara 2020. Now, speaking of Lara, full disclosure, we lost one of these units during Lara near Shupik Bayou, not far from Hackberry. Exactly one of these pieces of equipment. That actually might be the, the one that fell over. It disappeared when we went back to pick it up. It was gone. Now look, before you start bombarding the comments with, why don't you chain these down or fasten them? There's nowhere to do that on the jersey walls. Believe me, we have thought of that. You have to just chain them down, or I'm sorry, see I'm already thinking of that. Fasten them to the jersey wall and then leave it there. However, after last year's loss at Shupik Bayou, this year I decided we're gonna start putting cameras on these systems using the exact same clamp with a big old L bracket that was produced by another one of our supporters. And the whole thing sits about 10 feet away and watches the equipment. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. We did that going all the way back for the first time this year with Elsa over in Cedar Key. 30, 40 mile per hour wind, no big deal, but it worked. And it actually proved to be very interesting to watch the equipment when we set it up. You can actually see what goes on, see if anybody messes with it. And you can see the wind. You can match up the time to what the wind speeds were on the video. It's actually very, very useful. And should something go wrong, which is exactly what happened during Ida, 
we might be able to troubleshoot and figure out what happened. You know, did somebody come by and loosen the teeth screws a little bit? Maybe, you know, did we not tighten them all the way? Whatever. And we can we can see what happened. It's, it's visual evidence, and it's very interesting to watch. So that's the setup. Now let me show you the video evidence. As they say, let's go to the video. Let's roll tape, and I'll show you what happened. All right. So... Yes, I know I misspelled it in my titling. <laughs> the saved file, Weather Station's Disaster. That's the name of the video file that I rendered out, and this is what we got. August the 28th, there's myself, Matt, Brent, setting this system up on the Hale Boggs Bridge. That is in Louisiana. 310, coming out of New Orleans, is the other name for it. There's me putting the unit onto the Jersey Wall. The camera system is literally on another one of these orange things, uh, and it's about 10 feet away, watching everything that goes on. So there I am, tightening it down. I've zoomed in digitally here in post-processing to show you. I tightened that sucker down. We all triple-checked it. It was as solid as it could be. That thing does not move. It is tight. It's fastened on there. Again, they use these for road signs. And this is what it looked like the next day, August the 29th. The wind speed is screaming through there, no problem, everything's going great. Then I wanted to figure out exactly what was going on. Why did we kind of get this sort of, uh, this foobar here? What happened? So what we're going to do is I'm going to speed the video up now. And you'll see as we do that, uh, well first we see it in real time, sorry I forgot. This is the real time video. It leans over. Let's go back a few seconds. I screwed up my own presentation. That's okay. So there it is. It's doing fine. Then it starts to, to come loose. And we were watching this live. They showed this on the Weather Channel. It's like, ugh, how embarrassing. You know, oh, there it goes. That's so hard to watch. And yeah, it's like, dad, gone. Now, same exact setup over in Homa on the, I think it's the Barrow Street Bridge. It's one of the big bridges that goes across there in Homa. There's Brent fastening the, the weather station while I'm tightening down the camera box. We're done. It's as solid as a rock. I mean, I'm telling you, you couldn't move that thing yourself if you tried. But Mother Nature certainly knows how to because watch what happens. Tragedy. Once again, you know, it's like, you got to be kidding me. Later in the day, this one comes undone, tilts over, a big gust of wind blows it off. And that is the end of that. Almost $6,000 worth of equipment blown off the bridges. The data is lost. Ugh. Very, very painful. And, you know, that's the big question. What happened? Are you guys just inept? Did you just not do something right? You know, no, that's not what it is. We're very smart. I am very meticulous in the way I set stuff up. Even when I'm very tired, I try to make sure I focus. And during these events, I'm actually very hyper-focused. Yes, there is room for error. We are humans. We make mistakes. But those four T-screws are infallible. You either have tightened them or you didn't. And we did. So what happened? Let's take a look. We'll keep moving with the video. And I'll show you what I think was the problem here. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at real-time video first. There's the real-time video from the Hale Boggs Bridge. And now let's speed it up really, really fast. And that'll help us to understand what happened. And I want you to pay attention to the T-screws right about here. I'm going to zoom in and crop this for you so you can see something really weird starts to happen. They begin to move all by themselves. Can you see it? Especially the ones here on the right. They're moving. See that? It's moving. In fact, let's take the telestration away pause the video and I'll show you. See that? When I do the scrolling of the timeline, you can clearly see they are moving all by themselves. Even the ones over there on the left are moving all by themselves. That one right there. Watch, I'm going to do the video scroll again. This is the beauty of post-processing, isn't it? It's moving. See that? It's moving just ever so slightly, but enough that they actually continued to uh, unscrew themselves they backed themselves out, the threads, and then disaster struck, and we lost the equipment. And the exact same thing happened to both devices. You can even see that one moving. Look at it right there. 
even when it's just sitting there and it's getting agitated by the wind. It's holding on for dear life, but it unscrews itself. And then it goes over into the, uh, the grass below. I actually went and picked this one up. And we're going to try to send it back to RM Young and have them refurbish it. A couple of very generous people have stepped up to replace the equipment that was lost. So we're going to actually have four of these weather stations going forward. We had a third one that we did not set out for Ida because it had some weird wind data on it. I guess it's a good thing we didn't. So when we're all said and done, we're going to have four of these. But we'll get to that in a minute. Same thing happens over here in Homa. So again, let's pause the video and I'll show you. Watch you see the little T-screw, the T-screws the there? They're, they're both turning, both sets of them. Right there, watch that. Watch this one right here. I'll scroll the video, make it really fast as I crop in. And you can see them clearly turning in the wind there. And the same exact thing happens. Uh, they back out enough and boom, $3,000 into the drink. So what on earth caused this? My theory, go back to the title card here, move me out of the way. My theory, hi, I'm over here now, is not what you think it is. And I bet you everybody watching this is already typing in comments and hollering at the screen, oh, it's vibration from the bridge or you know, vibration from something or it's just rattling. I believe that it is much more complicated than that. And I don't mean something weird like voodoo, or a mysterious force. It is an interesting mystery phenomenon, and that's a catchy title card because I want people to watch the video and try to figure out exactly what happened. My theory, because this doesn't start happening until the wind speeds are really getting up there, close to hurricane force and beyond, because remember, we went back and we were able to look at the data until it ends abruptly when those things fall off and just turn off. One of them went into the river down there, up until that point, we had reliable data coming in every minute, and we started noticing a trend, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. It wasn't until the wind speeds really got up there that those things started to come out. They didn't do it all day long. I've looked at a time lapse and sped it up from the moment the sun came up all the way until the disaster, if you want to call it that, and for us it is. And those don't start unscrewing themselves until the wind speeds really get jacked up. So that leads me to this hypothesis. The anemometer is generating, in my opinion, some kind of harmonic frequency that's translating down the steel mast into the orange clamp. And that vibration is the exact frequency that's starting to turn those things the other direction. Loosey-goosey, right? Righty-tighty, loosey-goosey. It loosey-gooseys them, and they unscrew, and those are tight. I mean, we got to really wrench those in there. So to come along and unscrew them, it's not that the whole thing is jiggling. It's absolutely not. Why? Because the camera box is perfectly still, and it's mounted the exact same way with an orange barrier clamp. You understand that? And it doesn't move. You don't see the camera drifting and it goes, no, the camera boxes were absolutely concrete solid when we went to pick those up. Nothing of the sort happened to them. And they have a broader face. It's a you know decent sized Pelican box there. The exact same one that's fastened to the, the clamp for the weather station. It's a vertical version that's got the camera inside of it. They didn't move at all. So, what the heck caused this? I think it's some kind of a harmonic vibration similar to if you took a piece of paper and you blow across it and you can eventually make it make a like a hum sound, you know. Uh, a harmonica does the same thing. The word harmonica, duh, it's the vibration. If you blow through a harmonica just like willy-nilly, nothing happens. You put the right force through there, you vibrate the different chambers of the harmonica, voila, you've got music. Um, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, long time ago, was a suspension bridge. The wind hit it just right, and it caused it to vibrate and undulate. You ought to look that up on YouTube and Google. Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster. The whole thing undulated, it fell into the river, and that was a major problem. Engineering failure. Something different than the simple explanation of, oh, the whole thing just vibrated and it wasn't secured, 
or you need some rubber things under uh, the screws, maybe, but I think that we're going to have to like look at maybe locking the the other end with some nylon lock nuts. Matt suggested that, uh, and Brent agrees, so that they cannot back out. Um, we got to prevent them from backing out because I think when we get to a certain wind speed, this is always going to happen. So there is the potential for implications here that in hurricane force winds, certain pieces of engineering out there, buildings, bridges, I don't know, whatever, is susceptible to harmonic frequencies that creates a vibration that can then lead to some kind of structural failure. That is why I want this video shared far and wide so that we can get some eyes on it. Because what happened here might, maybe it won't, but it might help something else. You understand? We have stumbled across something here serendipitously that very well may lead to, oh wow, we didn't really know about that. And it may help somebody in the future with who knows what. This video will live on YouTube long after I'm gone and it might just help somebody down the road. I'm interested in your theories. Certainly put it in the comments. You can refer me to other people if you want to. Also, you can email me, hermark, H-U-R-R-M-A-R-K, like Hurricane Mark, hermark, H-U-R-R-M-A-R-K, at gmail.com. If you know of an engineer, a physicist, somebody that specializes in harmonic vibration, something like that, maybe somebody at Boeing, you know, or Lockheed Martin, I'm serious. I want to know exactly why this happened not just, oh, it vibrated and fell off the bridge. That's too simple of an explanation. I wanted to put this out here for you, and we see what we get. You know, the Internet's an interesting place. You get a lot of wild theories, I know, but at the end of the day, we sift through it, and I think we can figure out the exact cause, and maybe, just maybe, this mystery phenomenon that took place in Louisiana during Hurricane Ida just might help somebody else in the future. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for watching.